All right, in this video, I want to talk about what are often referred to as mixing problems. And certainly not every mixing problem would be solved this way, but a lot of times the ones that you'll encounter in a calculus class or at the beginning of a DE class is you solve them using first order separable differential equations. Um, and that's certainly how we're going to solve this one. I've got a few things jotted down here at the beginning, um, but then we'll actually you know, write out a lot of the work. So. So again, basic idea in these problems, you've got some big tank, you've got some object, you've got stuff coming in at a certain rate at a certain concentration, you've got stuff going out at a certain rate and a certain concentration, and you're trying to figure out the amount um, of some stuff um, in the tank after t minutes. So, you know, obviously these are phrased in terms of tanks, but I think uh, with a little imagination you can certainly um, apply these to uh, uh, certainly a variety of uh, at least engineering situations, all kinds of, I think, applicable, applicable uh, real-life problems out there that, uh, that you might encounter down the road. Um, okay, so in this problem, we've got a tank. It contains a 1,000 liters of brine. Um, so all the brine means in this case is we've got a salt water mixture. Total, if we could just kind of take all the salt out and weigh it, it, there's 15 kilograms of dissolved salt in that tank. Okay, so maybe we're flushing out the tank. Pure water is entering the tank at a rate of 10 liters a minute. Uh, we're keeping the tank thoroughly mixed, um, and it drains from the tank at the same rate. So it's coming in at 10 liters a minute. It's going to be going out at 10 liters a minute. And we want to know how much salt is in the tank after T minutes in this problem. <coughs> okay, excuse me. So here's our little... Here's our little tank here on the, uh, it's a beautiful tank. Um, so the idea, we've got our little tank here, pure water's coming in, and, you know, certainly this uh, salt water mixture's coming out. Um, and just s to label things, we're going to say, uh, we're going to call A of T, that's going to be the amount, in the, salt, uh, the amount of salt in the tank after T minutes. Um, DA DT, well, that's going to, Remember notationally on the left that says the change in the amount of salt with respect to time. Intuitively, how would you get the change of the amount of salt with respect to time? Well, I guess intuitively it would be the rate in of the salt minus the rate out of the salt. Let me stick my T in there. And again, this is, you know, something in real life that you have to stop and think about and uh, you know but this is this is how you would get started on a, a you know a real problem uh, mathematically you, you know this is I think this is, would be the hard part for um, you know a lot of people to come up with at the beginning uh, probably myself included so again it's it's really simple when you think about it the change in the amount hey it's just the rate in minus the rate out a little more generically on these types of problems um, maybe to break it down a little bit more the way I think about it is at least in this problem, and kind of generically, it says the change of the amount with respect to time. To me, it's going to be basically the concentration of the salt that enters the tank. It's going to be, you'd have to multiply that by the rate of the, you know, I put in parentheses water, the rate of the water flow, um, right? I mean, certainly the, the, the amount of salt coming in, it's going to depend on two things, how much salt is in the mixture and how quickly the mixture is coming into the tank. Um, and then we'll simply subtract out the, the rate out of salt. And that to get that to me, it would just be the concentration of the salt that's in the tank times the rate at which the water, or the, the I shouldn't say water, the rate at which the uh, this salty mixture is flowing out of the tank. And in this problem, at least, it says the concentration, the concentration coming in is just zero because it's pure water. Um, the rate of the flow is going to be 10 liters a minute. And now, when it flows out, the concentration is going to change, right? Because at the beginning, for example, there's 15 um, kilograms of salt, but that changes with time because it's getting it's getting less salty. So the concentration is going to depend on the amount of salt at any time t. And again, to get a concentration, you just take the amount and divide it by the volume of the container. So the amount is A of T, the volume of the container in this case was 1,000 liters. And then I'm just multiplying that by the rate at which the water is exiting. And we said uh, that was also 10 liters a minute. So 
In this case, obviously, the first term here is simply going to be zero. So it says the change in the amount of salt with respect to time is equal to this negative a of t divided by 1,000 times 10. And that's going to be our, that's going to help us give our, our separable um, differential equation that we have to solve. So obviously, again, if there was a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe if there was a, a, a salty mixture coming into the tank at a higher or lower concentration, you would certainly have to worry about this extra term as well. All right, so now we're off and running. We can do the calculus on it. So it says the change in the amount with respect to time, in this case, is going to be negative. I'm going to drop the, uh, the t on the a of t and just make it negative a over uh, 1,000 times 10. And OK, obviously, uh, we can simplify that uh, and get negative a over 100. So. A couple remarks here. Um, you know, I think getting to this part on these problems, that's really going to be the hard part more than anything. Uh, again, usually the ones you see, these, these separable differential equations that you see, um, they usually turn out to be relatively easy to solve, but it's just, I think, getting the problem set up in the first place. But uh, I hopefully did a decent uh, explanation there. Um, so, okay, at this point we've got a separable differential equation, and again, you basically just try to put the variables on the same side. I remember you don't want any dt's or da's or whatever in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dt and divide both sides by a. So negative 1 over 100 um, dt, and then I'm going to have 1 over a da. And now the point is, um, once we have things separated out, we can simply integrate both sides. So if we integrate the left side, we get the natural logarithm of a, um, absolute value, and then we'll have negative 1 over 100 t. And we could you know, put a plus c1 on the left or the, a plus c2 on the right for our constants, but I'm just going to imagine I've combined them and I've got one arbitrary constant. OK, now really we were given an initial condition at the beginning of the problem. Um, it just wasn't kind of stated explicitly. I guess it was, if you think about it. Um, it says uh, at the very beginning we had um, 15 kilograms of dissolved salt. So it says the amount of salt at time 0, when we start, that's going to equal 15. OK, so again, this is what we're plugging in for t. It says the amount at time 0. This is what we're going to plug in for a. Okay, and that's going to allow us to solve for our constant. So if we plug that in, I'm going to go up here to the top right. Um, it says if we plug in 15, um, we'll have the natural logarithm of 15. Um, again, we're plugging in t equals 0, so the negative 1 over 100 times 0 will just give us 0. And then we're left with our plus c. So hey, now we've got our, our, our constant. So it says ln of a equals negative 1 over 100 t plus the natural logarithm of 15. And at this point, just to get rid of the natural logarithms, we exponentiate both sides. So I'll do both sides. On the left, we're just left with our absolute value of a. Um, I'm going to break up the right side. Be careful here. It, it, I think if when I see people make an algebra mistake, this is probably where they do it. Um, so e to the negative 1 over 100 t times e to the ln of 15. Okay, don't turn it into addition. It would be multiplication when you break it up, right? We've got like bases. If you add the exponents, that would certainly give us what's, uh, what's right above it. So we've got e to the negative 1 over 100 t, and then e to the ln of 15 is just 15. And so on the right side, we've got 15 e to the negative 1 over 100 t. And since the initial amount is positive, the right side is always positive, we can conclude that the amount is always positive and, you know, um, that A is always positive. Um, so we're left with our, our formula here, A equals 15 times E to the negative 1 over 100 T. So, um, Again, uh, hopefully not too bad. I think uh, kind of getting them set up at the beginning, that's the tricky part. Again, just remembering that, hey, you've got a rate of change. How do you get the rate of change? It's the rate in minus the rate out. 
Um, again, I think in most, a lot of these problems, the differential equations, the separable ones aren't too bad. You, a lot of them you pick up natural logarithms and exponentiate, and really I think, uh, hopefully I've picked out a pretty um, cookie cutter example, so at least I hope so. Um, Alright, I hope this made a little bit of sense. As always, if you have comments or questions, feel free to post them.